My name is uh, Harold Roberts. I'm a uh, cardiothoracic surgeon at West Virginia University's Heart and Vascular Institute, and I work uh, here in uh, Morgantown, West Virginia. I think our team is uh, fairly unique. We collaborate with world-class electrophysiologists as well as have senior surgeons with decades of experience in doing surgical ablation. Doctors Badwar and Wei have been doing this for many years and it was very comforting because I know that we have an operation that is extremely effective and will cure most patients in 90-95% of the cases. The risk of not treating atrial fibrillation are not inconsiderable. Atrial fibrillation is responsible for about 30% of all strokes, and stroke for stroke, these are some of the worst ones around. We believe in general that the causes of atrial fibrillation are related to coexisting valvular heart problems, things that cause the left atrium and uh, the right atrium, these chambers, to uh, dilate. When they get bigger, they uh, distort the uh, electrical system in the heart and that can uh, produce these problems. Patients uh, generally will feel palpitations and they'll have shortness of breath. Eventually the atrial fibrillation can be continuous and then uh, they really won't have much in the way of symptoms and can be even completely without symptoms. For our team, we take a fairly aggressive guideline-directed approach to patients that have valvular heart disease, coronary artery disease, and coexisting atrial fibrillation. We feel that one of the tragic things happening uh, across North America is the fact that uh, only about 30 or 40 percent of patients who come to heart surgery who have a history of atrial fibrillation get it treated it's very commonly ignored. By adhering to the now existing guidelines for which we've had a key role in formulating, for the first time it is now recommended that uh, patients that have atrial fibrillation and coexisting heart disease have the atrial fibrillation treated. By doing the Cox Maze 4, we now virtually eliminate risk of having a, an embolic stroke from the heart. But if all they need is the mitral valve or the tricuspid valve, it can be done minimally invasively through a five centimeter uh, incision on the right side of the chest. It's done uh, usually a robotically assisted. We get the same results using this technique as we do with our open cases. My number one piece of advice to patients that have valve disorder and atrial fibrillation, make sure that the surgeon you go to has experience in treating both and insist that both be treated because you have only one shot in general not only get rid of your valve problem but to also treat and hopefully eradicate the atrial fibrillation.